Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to the lecture number 5. We are going to talk today about the history of a western comics. So, the course title as it goes decoding comic studies and reading graphic narratives in 21st century India. So, today what I have planned for you is to talk about the history of western comics where I will be talking that how it developed. In fact, it is very important to know the history of any art, whether it is a painting, it is a novel or let us say for example, anything or any subject or discipline that you talk about, it is very important for all of us to know the history, because it is a history that tells how it developed, what are the changes that it has gone through, what are the transformation that it came across. In fact, what we are experiencing today, any particular art how it came to this particular stage. So, until and unless we know this, we will not be able to understand comics. And if you re recall more, we have been talking about the definition of a comics and the reason why it is very difficult for all of us to reach any definite definition of comics. Because if we look at the history, we see various forms of a transition, various shifts that took place and it changed what comics was and how it is today present to us. So, let me show you the slides and talk about what the history is. So, if you see uh, decoding comic studies and uh, here we also talked about Will Asner's comics and sequential art and understanding comics moving ahead we see that how the components of comics came to be and the impact of socio-cultural history on the Marriott transformation seen in the form in its journey from comic strips to comic books to the contemporary graphic novel. So, comic historian in the line with uh, Scott McCloud have constantly reinvented the boundaries of a comics by going back in history to trace the beginning of not just the medium, but the individual traits marking it and genres unfolding out of it. Although the traits associated with comics takes the route back to the history of arts. So, let us first discuss the scholarship that has established comics as a field worth investigating, which will be followed by a brief history of early comics based on said scholarship. So, one of the most influential and pioneer figure or let us say work I would say on comic strips came out as a survey book titled The Comics by Frederick Colton Waugh as you could see on the screen and the book that is a comics by Colton Waugh. This book came in 1947. So, I will, I will write down the age of the publication. The reason is because it is a very important because when we are talking about the history, it is a very significant to remember on which particular date or let us say for example, if not date and which particular year that particular comics came into the existence. So, that you can see that how it developed, what was the interrelations. Moreover, if I have to talk about the literature review that is very significant in any research, what do we do in literature review? When we are exploring a particular area, we read lot of works related to that particular area. In fact, we also try to find out the gaps between uh, one book or another book and how the book both are concerned and how it developed. Let us say more pertinent example would be if I ask you to read 1930s, 1940s novel. It is very important for us to know what happened before until and unless we know it will be difficult for us 
to make a connection or to find out that how it has to be read, which is why I will note down the publication time of all the important books, so that you can remember for yourself and the purpose why I am going to talk in details about the history, so that you can know the nuances concerning with comic studies and the same time if you are going to delve into this field, it is very important for you to know the important books and you can take these books for your references and for further exploration and which is why I am going to be very precise and concise when I am going to talk about the name of the books and also the publication time. So, here you see on the slide the comics you see by Colton Wo, which came in 1947. Moving to the next slide, here we have a, a, he is a one of the foremost comic historian is a French American Maurice Horn, right, who wrote the World Encyclopedia of Comics and this one came in 1976. Please note down the World Encyclopedia of Comics edited by Maurice Horn 1976. So, which focuses mostly on American and European comics tradition. So, this book is specifically not concerned with Asian and South Asian, this book is specifically concerned about American and European comic tradition. Moving to the next which you see comics of the American West that is also by Maurice Horn and in this what you see this is more about the history of American comics and the next one that we have and this one came in 1977. So, you see the development and now we have word encyclopedia of cartoons that came in 1979, which features a thousand of cartoonists and animators from across USA, Europe, Russia, Japan and South America. So, this book is extremely significant for the reason if you are interested to know more about cartoonists and animators and not only is limited to Europe or let us say USA, but also it covers Russia, Japan and South America. And then we have sex in the comics that came in 1985, which deals with how sex is portrayed in superhero comics, right. So, as you are going to read about superhero comics, you must know that how things are talked in this, right. So, now moving to that, we have a contemporary graphic artist, which came in 1986, which is a dictionary type handbook of major cartoonist, illustrators and designers of the time. And then we have 100 years of American newspaper comics and this one came in came out in 1996, which is considered to be the definitive history of American comic strip. So, the point what I am going to talk about is that if you see what are we doing initially we had as I had already talked initially we had a strips, then we had a comics and now also we have a graphic novels. So, how are we going to see the development of it? What are the factors? What are the changes? What are the reasons and rationality that were behind in developing from comic strips to uh, comics and then graphic novels? So, as I discussed in the previous class itself that trade paperback is not what graphic novels are and trade paperback is not what comics are. So, how are we going to know and in fact, one question that I am supposed to ask you is this that why comic strips developed in the comics, what are the reason, why is it so that initially we did not have a comics and now we have a graphic novels. So, you see the development and the reason I will talk about it, but keep in the mind before I move to the next slide is this that technology is one of the important factor, right. What does technology do? Technology tries to interfere in our socio-cultural life and changes the way we are looking society or we are intermediating with the world. So, moreover in addition to what I am saying technology 
kills the older technology. In fact, the way we are looking at the previous things, now we are not going to see the same thing again. Let us say for example, I am sure that you remember work of art in the mechanical production where Walter Benjamin is talking about that how photography has changed the society. And then we have Raymond Williams who uh, his book on television again he is talking about that how television changed the entire society and we are so which means before how the society was before television and how society is after television and what ha what television did to us did to our culture did to our society so in the same way when we are reading comics it is very important for us to understand what is the role of technologies and which is why that imagine if there is no print has it been possible that we would have been reading graphic novels the answer is no so which means it is a print culture that accelerated the development of a comic so what else there are multiple regions as we will be proceeding with this discussion history of western comics i will be focusing on these important shifts or important uh, factors that made this change possible so look at the slide please so here we have someone called ronald joseph gollard right this person who is called american popular culture historian and uh, he is considered significant in his contribution to comic history and has written the adventure decade comic strips in 30s so here it is and this one came out in 1975 and then we have comic book culture and illustrated history that came out in 1980 and then we have the great comic book artist that came out in 1986. So, Ron Gollard's great history of a comic book the definitive illustrated history from the 1890s to the 1980s it came out in 1986. So, these are the important book uh, which is very important for us to know and to read. So, the comic book readers companion and A to Z guide to everyone's favorites, fa uh, sorry everyone's favorite art form that came in 1993. So, here you see the development the person called Ronald Joseph Gollard has written the book Adventures Decade, Comic Book Culture, The Great Comic Book Artist, Great History of Comic Books and here we come the comic book readers companion. So, you see this book is not only for comic artist, this book is more significantly for the people who are delving into to know the discourses of comics. So, the comic book readers companion and A to Z guide to everyone's favorite art form is a very I would say seminal one which changed the way we have like for students the way they read comics and then we have the funnies 100 years of American comic strips that came out in 1995 and then we have comic book encyclopedia the ultimate guide to characters graphic novels writers and artists in the comic book universe that came out in 2004 which means almost 20 years before among many other on comics. So, Gollard was also the editor of the encyclopedia of American comics from 1987 till his death in January 2022. So, here you could see this that how Gollard is so important for uh, students and research scholars who are getting into uh, comic studies. So, his contribution we cannot forget. So, Gollard also has multiple runs on major comic characters like the Phantom and the Flash Garden. And here we come uh, two important comics as you could see the Phantom and the Flash Garden. Now, here we have the person called American Comics Collector Bill Blackbeard, right. This name we should not forget and we will never forget if we are even thinking about comics or going into comics. So, Bill Blackbeard was perhaps the greatest defender of a comics as a text worth studying. 
Blackbeard was the founder director of the San Francisco Academy of a Comic Art, which according to an article on the death of a Blackbeard by Magalith Fox in the New York Times, consists of 2.5 million strips and comic section from 1894 to 1996. So, the point what I am making here with the help of a black, black beard is this that why are we reading comics right and black for me black beard is more significant not only for what he has contributed in comics, but more importantly that why we should read comics right that is the one uh, I would say that uh, focus or emphasis that he made importantly that he changed the perception of the people to look at comics in a very different way. So, so far comics have been observed or understood as a part of entertainment for the children, which means that you are supposed to buy these comics or strips meant for only and only children. But first time we notice that these people after a certain point of time, they are making a great hinge. In fact, they are trying to constantly convince us that comics is not only meant for children, but it is a very serious art form. It concerns us, it talks about our culture, we will talk about that how does it talk about our culture and therefore, it is our honest job in fact, sincerity that we should advocate people to read comics it should be taken most importantly, it should be taken seriously right. So, now we are going to look at Bill Blackbeard's contribution. So, here on the slide if you see that Bill Blackbeard was perhaps as I said the great defender of a comics right and as you could see that uh, his uh, contribution in transforming comics as a text is extremely significant. Now, we have a David Kunzele who is talking about the earliest comic strips in his books. The early comic strip, narrative strips and the picture stories in the European broadsheet from 1450 to 1825 and this one came out in 1973. Father of the comic strip, Rodolphe Toffer which came out in 2007 and Sam the best comic strips and graphic novelette that came out in 2019. So, the three books by Kunzeli, the one uh, the early comic strip, the second one we have the father of the comic strip and then the third one we have Sam. This three books by Kunzeli that traced the comic strip from before the arrival of Swiss cartooner Rodolphe Toffer, right. So, here you see the pictures of Swiss cartoonist, right. Let me write it for you, Swiss, anyway we are going to talk about him, right, Swiss cartoonist. So, David Kunzel is significant if you have to uh, know and see the uh, changes that before Swiss cartoonist came into the picture, he has written these three, right, father of the comic strip the early comic strip and the Sam, who is considered to be the first to use the comic strip in the way we know today, right. So, Rodolphe Toffler's contribution is this that he is the first one. In fact, I would say that he was considered, he is being considered to be the first to use the comic strip in the way we know today through the works of Toffler and into and into the works of Toffler student and comic strip artist Charles Amerinoe, better known as Sam, right. And this is after his name, uh, David Kunzle wrote a book called Sam, right. So, so here he is a framing in fact, what I am trying to do that in this way we could see that how a fundamental history of a comic strips in the early 19th century, right. So, we can know the fundamental history of the comic strips in the early 19th century and then we, are, we have Robert C. Harvey, who was a comic artist and academics whose works are considered to be vital to
to the understanding of the comics form. Harvey's book and this one, The Art of the Funnies, which came out in 1994 <laughs> and The Art of the Comic Book that came out in 1996 were published by the University Press of Mississippi and he also edited right and that is what I wanted to write for you I N K S Inks the journal of aesthetic sorry the journal of uh, the comic studies society right. So, remember this name in fact, uh, uh, Rich Marshall is one of the major authorities on pop culture who has written about comic strips in his book America's great comic strip artist from the yellow kid to the peanuts and that came out in 1989. So, here you see that one of the contemporary giants in comic history is Ian Gordon right and you should never forget this name. He is one of the contemporary giants as you could see that he pioneering work we have comic strips and consumer culture that is from 1890 to 1945. And this, this book merged comics with cultural studies in the academic milieu. So, here what I am trying to suggest with the help of Ian Gordon is that look at the title. The title is that comic strips and the consumer culture. So, here you see that Ian Gordon's contribution can be thought of in a such a way that how comic studies can help in developing culture studies or vice versa, which means when we are living in interdisciplinary field, it is very significant to understand. Moreover, comic studies can never be read and never be understood without knowing or taking the help of other disciplines. And what Ian Gordon does in his book called Comic Strips and a Consumer Culture, he is talking about that how the methodology of culture studies is helpful in reading comics. Moreover, he is also talking about that comic studies can be very beneficial in developing comic in developing culture studies. So, think for a comics for a second right? and think for a culture studies for a second. What does culture studies do? Let me give you an example. Let us say for example, medical humanities. right? What does be as a literary person or let us say a person who is invested or who is investing in literature department, what do we do when it comes to medical humanities? Our job is not to treat the patient. right? Our job is not to tell the medical institutions that these medicines are important and must be prescribed for a particular patient or a person who is suffering from a particular disease. Our job is to look at the object which is a object studied by medical science and then how it is going to be approached from socio-cultural perspectives right? and which means we are bringing two different disciplines together. The one side we have a medical science and another side we have let us say for example, sociology. right? So, the cultural object we are treating the object which is being studied by medical science as also a cultural object and we are doing a study on it. In the same way what comic studies do? Comic studies also deals with so many themes and issues and moreover comic studies is extremely significant is also because it talks about something which is not possible in other art form right. What I mean to say that comic studies can be also a gate through which various discourses and various argument can come out. In fact, it is talking about certain issues which was came very late in other art forms that we are going to discuss as we read history of western comics. Alright, so focusing on Ian Gordon, so look at the slide please. We also have the one of the important book called Kid Comic Strips 
a genre across four generation right and this one like if you uh, uh, see this and there is another one we have superman right and this one came in 2016 and then superman the persistence of american icon came in 2017 which means 6 years before and the superhero symbol media culture and politics this came in 2019 among many others gordon also co-edited some very recent book like comics and ideology which came out in 2001 and then we have a film and comic books here we see 2007 and then we have the comics of charles schools the good grief of modern line that came it came out in 2017 right so here you see what gordon has done right what gordon has done as a historian a service by recognizing the importance of popular visual sources as important clues to understanding American culture. So, the point what I am making my dear students is that how we can know about the American culture. So far we read history, so far we read political science, all let us say for example magazines, pamphlets, all let us say for example we go and look into the archives to know about the history. But can you ever thought or in fact can it was ever part of any discussion among the groups that comics can also be the part of a discussion to know about the history of a particular culture? The answer is no. So far whatever we have done so if we want to know the history is first thing that we refer to history books and later on sometime when we have read new historicism with Stephen Greenberg like people then we got to know that okay if we want to know history we should also read literatures we should also read other forms art forms available to us to know about to know about history of a particular culture but it never came across right it never crosses your mind that you also read comics to know the history of a particular culture so ian gordon's contribution is that he is paving the way in fact he is showing us that how comics are also instrumental in fact can be helpful in knowing American culture. So, in the same fashion if comic culture exists, it does not exist in isolation. It is not written I am sure that if, if like I do not have a time to talk about more post-structuralism because my job is to talk about comic studies. So, therefore, what I am trying to make you aware that by knowing comic studies we just do not entertain ourselves that is a very silly way to think about comics, but we can also know about a particular culture. So, therefore, what Ian Gordon is doing not just talking about that knowing if you want to know a particular culture you should read comics, but he is showing that how things or disciplines are interrelated. In fact, look at his uh, look at his uh, title of the book right the one that is edited comics and ideology right he is talking about the comic culture right the superhero symbol what is happening in uh, comics and ideology you see that comics is also part of ideology it is also produced through ideology moreover it is also contributes in shaping your ideology right so which is why we cannot limit ourselves to read comics just as form of entertainment right so we have to take comic seriously so the reason why I am talking and discussing this particular chapter so that it is not only telling you the history, but how lot of things are interwoven and we need to know them the complexities of comic studies. So, film studies and comic studies they both are related to each other culture studies and comic studies they both can be brought together. So, in fact it is high time that we should not look comic studies in isolation, but we should read comic studies in relation to the other disciplines. So, moving back to the slides please now see the slide therefore, what you see here on the slide is that the superhero symbol right that is came in media culture 2019 and then comics and ideology that we talked about 
So, now taking the reins from the ever mentioned comic historian authors like Jean Paul Gabliet, Thierry Smaldon, right? Jean Paul Gabliet that is on your screen that you see, and then Thierry Smaldon frame a standard history of a comics in the western world in their books of comics and men. This is a book I was to, I am talking about of comics and men a cultural history of American comic books. right? So, that was in fact a translation translated in 2010 and then we have the origin of a comics from William Hogarth to Winsor McKay, right? So, this translation came out in 2014 respectively. Both the books are in French, right? As I was saying that they both were translated, right? Of comics and men and uh, like even look at the title, looks like it's a French book and they were translated. They came out. So, both the books are in French and both have been translated by, let me tell you the name and remember this name, Bart Beatty and Nick Nguyen. So, because of these two people, right, and also because of their cultural significance in the parlance of comic studies on a global level. So, one of the reasons for the French domination in comic studies might be that since the end of a 20th century, French comic artists have exhibited a growing interest in literature and now enjoy speaking about drawing as if it were a form of writing, right. So, what I mean to say a writing ik richer, right. So, while Gabriel discusses and breakdowns a rather large chunk of history in the first part of his book ranging from 1842 till the 1990s, Smaldren focuses only on the beginning going back to English painter William Hogarth and ending with the works of Winsor Mackey. I request you that please remember these two names William Hogarth and Winsor Mackey. Hence, limiting himself till the first quarter of the 20th century, the latter half of the 20th century which incorporates the rise of the underground comics also referred to as comics. Right? So, remember this comics is, is like you see this is x, it is because something that is underground comics. So, I will uh, talk about this as well. Right? So, followed by the rise of a graphic novel that is further addressed by Hillier. And in the second chapter of his PhD dissertation from Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey and the title of PhD dissertation was in case you want to read that is a contemporary graphic narratives history ethics and aesthetics right 2006 all right so here we have uh, so coming having both the constituents of image and text draw lineage in arts as well as written literature so while the most or let us say closest approximation of comics in the art world would encompass what comic scholar Bart B. T. calls proto comics in his book Comics versus Art. Gabriel expounds comic art to be the form taken by stories in images in an age of mass publishing that is started in the 19th century. So, what I am going to emphasize on the beginning of a comics as a practice in printing rather than delving into the cultural influences of a proto comics with the given understanding that comics a means of expression appearing in the 19th and 20th century is the inevitable or final stage of a process in which hieroglyphs, the present column and the likes were mere precursors. So, the latest in the long line of precursors to comics 
stemmed out of popular culture with weekly story papers that means from the 1820s to the first world war. So, dime novels from 1840s to the after first world war and then we have a pulp magazines from the late 19th century to the early 1950s before situating the rise of a comic books in the first half of the 20th century. While defining comics, Gabliet is emphatic about them being produced in the context of mass publishing since the 1830s and is very clear that he does not include the illustrated big little books which were in print from the 1930s to the 1950s because they did not incorporate the features which were intrinsic to comic arts where the iconic does not function simply as adjuvant to the written, but rather as an indispensable component to the formulation of the narrative. So, Cornell history professor Michel Kamen mentioned that the early 10th century is a transitional phase between popular culture situated from about 1885 to 1935 and a mass culture which begins around the, the 1960s and is termed proto mass culture. So, comic books proliferated most in the periods between 1935 and 1960. Remember this that comic books was uh, wide in circulation in nine, from 1935 to 1960s and hence may be said to belong to the transitional phase. And it is important to understand comics as a transitional medium both in its form and its a historical and cultural placement. So, comics became a mass cultural icon in the 1960 right. So, this is a period 1960 when it became mass cultural icon. When it reached higher excellence of the cultural hierarchy powered by the nostalgia of intellectuals born in the 1930s, the fascination that the college students had with superheroes and fervor of counter cultural rebellion in the 1970s with the formation of a subculture populated by dense network of speciality stories and a community of collectors and the advent of alternative comics which gave way to more literary and more personal uses of that medium. It is at this stage after about 240 years of comic history that artists have been able to tap into the true creative potential of a comics ability to show and tell. Although Gabliet in line with historian David Kunzley traces the root of a comics in the work of Rodolphe Toffler. He admits that Toffler was heavily influenced by the engravings of English painter William Hogarth, which he received as a gift from his father and created visual stories where various consecutive images were juxtaposed together, each over a given caption. Following Hogarth precedent, it is fitting to begin the history of western comics with the contribution of Hogarth. As you see on the slides, you see the transition I am talking about, Gablet, Kunjulis, Toffer and then Hogarth. All right. So, before I uh, go back to William Hogarth, there are something which I wanted to tell you right. The point is this that when we uh, uh, see uh, someone like William Hogarth, what is important for him right. William Hogarth was a son of a Latin professor and was moulded in his youth by the thoughts of the likes of John Locke and Joseph Edison. I am sure that you must have heard the name of Locke and Edison. Hogarth is known for his series based engravings which theory Smolderen emphatically calls novel in pictures right. So, Hogarth's first such work of primary importance which is considered by comics historian as perhaps the earliest precursor of a comics a Horlatt's progress framed in six engravings. So, the point that I want to make here right why Hogarth is important. See remember that print came very late right 
and along with the print comics were already being written or engraved as well. So, when it comes to let us say for example, Hogarth, Hogarth used to engrave right, he was not writing, he was basically engraving. So, let me uh, give you an example to make this idea quite clear to you. Remember that there is a song right and then you remember there is something called album. They both are different. What happens when you compile a particular set of song and brought in a one place, it becomes album. In the same way, what happens in Hogarth's uh, comic like generally we call is the reason that Hogarth's story is not complete right in one go. So, what he does? He brings different different panels at one place and as you see on the slides that will helpful for you. So, look at the slide the hall lights progress that is a 1732. So, here you see on the slide that in the slide there is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Look at another one Rex progress let me look at this Rex progress. This is uh, framed in 6 engravings right. So, you have to look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? 6 uh, engraving. What happens in the Rex progress with 8 engraving? Not 6, but 8 engraving. 8 engraving is there. After 10 years, he printed Marais a la mode, right? Marais a la mode a drama in 6 engravings right 6 you see and then interestingly what is followed by industry and idleness which is considered to be his longest work with 12 engraving 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and his final contribution to the genre was four stages of cruelty which consisted of four engravings. So, Hogarth is the artist who brought the art of a print into modernity in the way that any artist who falls back on age old practices of visual representation, the clear line, the model line, the combination of heterogeneous graphic styles, the schematic representation of instantaneous movement, the use of a posture or physiognomic expressions, caricature, speech balloons clearly take inspiration from Hogarth. To say that William Black in the 18th century, I am sure that you know his famous work the songs of innocence and of songs of experience or Topher and Richard Outcault in the 19th century or late even Windsor Mackey in the 20th century, 20th century were inspired by Hogarth is a mighty understatement since these major names are just the first in the line of a multitude of artists who owe their creative tradition to the OYO of Hogarth. All right? So, Hogarth is important for us for the reason as I uh, talked that his contribution in comics is extremely significant for the reason that every important comic artist are highly influenced. So, his engraving like his mode of representation was very different, but most of the time when we see comic artist, they are highly influenced and his technique I would say that were borrowed uh, by comic artist. So, here you see I will talk more about the Hogarth. So, here you see on the slide what we have is that Hogarth look at the slide please that the printed plate in each of Hogarth work act as a panels and when uh, uh, when put out in a sequence after a reassuring guided tour in a labyrinthine space that resonates with virtual trajectories. This aesthetic along with a chaotic swarming effect created by overcrowding the plate or a panel with much more than what the narrative itself require 
is replete in comics of Outcult and Mackay. So, here what I wanted to show you just uh, look at this right. In fact, if you see these Harlot's progress, then you see Rake's progress and then marriage law mode and then industry in idleness. What you notice in all these panels right. It, let me uh, let me write it for you. In fact, here comes something which you can see. I would say that it stick to this slide which is a uh, uh, very important for us. So, here you see that printed plate in each of Hogarth work act as a panel. So, let me see show you this here this all are acting as a panels right this four and when they are putting in a sequence right as I was talking about keep uh, thinking about song and album right. So, I am using an analogy of song. So, this one particular is a song and when we compile this all it is becoming an album all right. So, this is a kind of analogy that I am using to explain this to you. So, Hogarth work act as a panels and when they are put in sequence we see in a labyrinthing space that resonates with virtual trajectories right and this aesthetic has a chaotic swarming effect. Please note down this right swarming effect that was created by overcrowding the plate or a panel with much more than what the narrative itself require is replete that is the same thing you also see in two person out cold and Mackay. So, the point what I am making here is that what I mean by swarming effect right it simply means that it challenges right what does it do it challenges the reading process right it challenges the reading process you cannot right what happens most of the time when how do we read the page or let us say for example how do we read a book we read left to right top to bottom right how do we read a comic books in the same way we look at the first image first and then there is a direction given to this you should read this one first second one this third one this but in Hogarth's is making it a more complex right he is challenging our reading process he is asking us to pay a lot of attention to understand what is happening in the panel and it is not that he is using something which is not necessary in the panel no everything used in the panel is a deliberate attempt by Hogarth. We are supposed to put our attention to understand that why is this done in this particular fashion. So, here you see Hogarth is highly influential and most importantly Hogarth is a trained painter right. He is a kind of I would say academician, academician in the sense he has gone through a particular process through which he has learnt. I am putting this example because I will name someone in due course of time they are using something just because they want to right. Let us say for example, put it this way how do we write an exam? We have a very clear method of writing an answer where there should be a proper introduction if you are writing an essay then there is a body and then there is a conclusion right you cannot change this process. If you change this which simply means that essay is not written in the right format this is only really suggest that you do not have a skill of writing an essay. But when it comes to Hogarth who is an academician he knows how to do this, but he also challenges our process. Let us say for example, look at the modernist painting. Do you think that modernist painting in this is like a kind of a painting which can be read by a common man easily? The simple answer is no. Let us say look at the surrealist painting, look at the cubist right, look at the expressionist. It is a very very complex process to know the painting what is going on. They do two things, one they challenge the earlier process the way painting used to be understood and read and also that if you have to talk a complex things you cannot use the easy form to talk about the complex content you have to invent a new innovative form. 
So in the same way, Hogarth's contribution is in such a way that he brings lot of things together, but it does not mean he brings unnecessary things on the picture. He brings lot of things which are important, but if we are reading in the through the same process the way we used to read, it simply suggests that we won't be able to understand. All right. So this is what Hogarth and later on in Macaulay and Mackay, you will see the same thing happening and because they were highly influenced by Hogarth. So, look at the slide please, the slide on the on your screen. Now, here you see that this is a kind of uh, new thing that we see and notice. Let me say something more on it. So, because of this overcrowding right, lot of things are brought together. Look at this picture, what I say overcrowding. Look at this, look at this right. See. Here you see, look at this planet. I am asking you to pay attention and watch it closely. If you really want to understand what Hogarth is doing, look at the people around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, sometimes 7, sometimes 13, sometimes 14, right? And look at the lot of cloths over there. You, you, you do not even know if I if I ask you to put clear mind or simply you will not be able to understand. You have to pay attention. So, a lot of things in happening in the Harlow's progress. Coming to the next one, a rake's progress. You see here, you cannot even count, man, how many people are there. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Lot of people, lot of things are happening at the same time. So, this is what I am calling, let us say, overcrowding, right. So, overcrowding the panel with much more than what the narrative itself requires. So, this, because of this overcrowding, reading Hogarth's sequence unlike usually comic strips becomes very slow and meticulous right so which means that we are not going to read comic strip the way we used to read right Com the correct reading comic strips and reading hogarth are becoming two different things so far with our mind the way we used to read or habituated to read comic strips is one thing. Now, what Hogarth is asking for us is a challenging our mode and method of reading. So, look at the slide please again, interest in idleness and I would ask you to give your 5 and 10 minutes and try to understand this. Keep comic strips aside, right, with yourself. Keep comic strips and then you see. In fact, I would say look at some uh, strips that is available in the newspaper and then you see this, you will see very different understandings. It, 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 it asks a very different kind of attention. So, all right, look at this. So, here you see going back to the slide, the readers uh, sequence like unusual comic strips becomes very slow and meticulous. The reader of any graphic narrative in the veins of Hogarth style is a detective who is not only uncovering the overarching plot, but also getting lost in the little details to interpret the slightest of visual nuances. So, this tradition of readership and the ability to create such a space where the apparently unnecessary gains the stature of necessity through visual intervention makes comics the most natural mode of narrative representation, right? What I call the objective documentary reproduction of a visible reality, right? Let me repeat it for you. The objective documentary reproduction of a visible reality. So, this does not imply, this does not imply though the artist omission is not present, the seemingly unnecessary in the plan and exist even after reduction of what is not required to the point that every line or point on the frame is necessary, right. This is a point I am making, right. Every line or point on the frame is necessary. So, Toffer addresses this issue in a written piece from 1848 stating that a sign can be shortened indefinitely to which Smolderen adds that rather than destroying it 
subtraction actually move as closer to the intended idea of the illustrator. Even a very popular contemporary Indian artist and author Amruta Patil explained this very idea while discussing her process of writing graphic novels in an interview by Liv Mint, where she states that that is on your screen, you can easily read it. A scripting a graphic novel like this is sculptural via negativia, which means uncovering the essence of a things by whittling away all surplus. So, this is how comics are a reductive art and the reductivist tendency itself traces all the way to Hogarth's prince. All right. So, here what you see that what I have been talking about is Hogarth's contribution and the same way reductive art, right. Comic is considered even by Amruta Patil as a reductive art, right. Or let us say for example, what Rodolf Toffler says a sign can be shortened indefinitely. So, what I mean by like what they mean by uh, reductive art? It simply suggests that things available on comics is not that everything what came into the mind of the artist he over poured it. No, he meticulously and beautifully considered only those words, those colors, those lines, those plates, those panels which are important to discuss or which he wants to convey to you that is only things of level. Every other rest of the things are not included. What I mean to say that is interesting, right? which means to say that when you are looking or reading comics or let us say graphic or anything, any form of art in fact, not only comics, you are supposed to go deeper into the minds of the artist itself. One, why is he doing so? What is trying to create? What message is trying to convey to us? At the same time, your job is to understand that why did he write this, why did not he write this, right. So, most importantly, our focus is not only important thing that is written, but also something which is hidden, which is not written and why did he omit that. In the same way, when we are getting into the comic studies or reading any comics, our job is to look at why this color, why not that color, why this particular frame, why this particular panel, why not other panels. Because the moment we are using this particular methodology, it will give a more sense to us and which is why comics is to be taken seriously to be understood properly. Until and unless we use that kind of strategy and method, it will be difficult for us to understand what the comic is about. So, which is why what does Hogarth do? He challenges our way of reading process. He challenges the way we used to read and he changed it completely. Moreover, people after this also followed his and other techniques. So, all right, I will end this lecture here and I would ask you to please reflect all the points that I made and moreover, please read certain comics that was suggested by me. In fact, that was very much available on the screen and that is why I ask you to read so that you can understand and the very reason why I mentioned the name of all the books and the author and the publication so that you can see and relate and understand that which book is more important for you. Obviously, as a teacher I will suggest that you must read all these comics because we should develop a reading habit of reading comics and if we read it would develop a sense of reading comics and as well as we get to know what happens in the comics world or what happened in the comic world. And therefore, please before I end this class, it is my humble request, pick one or two whichever you like and read. So, that when I talk in the next class, you can understand it better. So, all right guys, see you, take care, bye bye.